Sapphire introduces Radeon RX 7800 XT Once Human Edition. AMD Ryzen 9000 stock has arrived at retailers ahead of official launch and pricing announcement. AMD Ryzen 9 9950X delivers 20% more performance over predecessor. And lastly, a new upscaling tech is coming soon and it's from ARM. Alright, so firstly we have the Sapphire Radeon RX 7800 XT Once Human Edition. This is the, basically the game Once Human that has been released already and it's a free to play game of course using the Unreal Engine 5 but now they're pairing up with Sapphire to make a once human edition style GPU here and as you can see already the GPU is basically the similar style you see from Sapphire basically the pulse cards it looks literally the same as you can already tell it's no different by looking at it and what is different is of course the back plate look at that the black plate looks cool because they have worked more work into this black plate than just saying once human or just putting up the main character which is the protagonist I guess of the game but the card looks very, very decent not gonna lie it, it, it's a decent looking car it's a 7800 XC so performance will be amazing and of course the team that they're going for is pretty neat I like it personally of course it's gonna be a limited edition card so if you're interested you can grab that next up we have a sneak peek from a retailer and basically he shows this in the reddit post here which is says just got them and as you can see we, we can clearly tell it is an AMD Ryzen 9000 series of processor and which is, we're looking at the AMD Ryzen 7 9700X of course with Radeon graphics so of course the integrated gpu igpu will be available and yeah it's already has been shipped to the retailers so we can expect a launch date will be announced real soon also the pricing so we'll be waiting for that eventually let's see what amd has to say and when they will be launching it but i'm guessing it's gonna be pretty soon so as the ryzen 9000 series will be launching soon we already have some performance benchmarks here and we have first performance benchmark from anantech and this is the leak we get to see and we already have well four leaks included here which is tested on 60 90 120 and 160 watts for the ryzen 9 9950x so let's look into it so firstly of course it says the gpu which is amd engineering sample that is hidden here for whatever reason but i guess it's for confidential purposes so it's completely hidden there and as you can see there these are the test condition we're looking at which is the blender 3.3 benchmark a daily pbo co tune water cooling is used and for reason the reason for that is that it is rated at 230 watts yes the test has been done in 230 watts that's quite a a lot high it's like intel level of cpu tests which is quite surprising because you know amd doesn't really go or clock this high although this is water cool that's why i guess we're looking into 230 watts of power draw so yeah as you can already see here it says the cpu package power is 229.974 which is exactly 230 so yeah it is quite high for amd processors so i guess it feels like amd is hitting the wall because otherwise they wouldn't be going this high in terms of wattage to gain more performance out of it but we'll see also to mention that it's around 60.5 to 62 so its temperatures are looking pretty good but it doesn't surprise me because it's, it's, it's being water cooled even then at 230 watts you're getting only 60 to 62 degrees celsius which is still pretty impressive not gonna lie so this is the graph you get to see here which is kind of hard to tell but still we can clearly tell at 60 watts which is we have they have conducted three tests here which is monster junk shop and classroom we're looking at 150 for the monster test in the blender of course for the ryzen 9 9950 x of course which is we're looking at 150 at 60 watts 100 and 100 for junk shop and 50 for classroom similarly at, at 90 watts we're looking at over 200 i'm guessing around 230 because that really doesn't tell you exactly how much but i'm guessing exactly around 230 for monster for junk shop is around 150 or less than 150 and for classroom we're looking at a little bit over 100 i'm guessing 102 that could be the case at 120 watts we're looking at for monster we're looking at over 250 i'm guessing 270 for junk shop we're looking at over 150 again 170 180 that would be the case classroom we're looking at over 100 which could be 125 that would be my guess at 160 watts we're looking at over 300 for monster for junk shop we're looking at around 200 and for classroom we're looking at around 150 but at 230 watts it goes even further which is 350 for monster for junk shop it's over 200 meaning 225 and for classroom we're looking at over 150 maybe maybe making it 160 170 so this is quite 
interesting to see the scaling of it so the scaling is pretty simple here at 60 watts we don't see that much of a scaling when you compare it to the 7950x x from the pre previous generation of course around only four percent increase not a big deal at 90 watts of course it scale it is scaling right now which is quite a lot it's also similar to four percent around four percent when you compare it to the 7950 at 120 we look a little bit gain but not much six person only when you compare it to of course the 7950x 3d according to the monster test and at 230 we're looking at even further than that which would be 20 percent around 20 percent when you compare all the tests so as you can see the ryzen 9 17 and 50x at monster test we're looking at 297.3 in junk shop we're looking at 180.2 and in classroom we're looking at 139.9 whereas the 9950x we already seen the score which is around 350 226 and 171 roughly of course which gives you an idea of course that at 230 watts it's around 20 percent which is quite a lot definitely it's a huge jump in performance but the problem is, will this be the normal scenario in terms of the 9950X? Like, is it going to be the normal scenario when you're using the processor in the normal use case? You know what I mean? Like, for example, at 60 watts, the scaling is not looking that great. Only just 4%. Understandable. But then again, 60 watts also isn't a realistic approach. But when you look into the 120 watts, which may seem a bit more realistic which is as you can see for monster is 268 whereas for the 7950x it's 256 so not a huge gap here as you can clearly tell so only like six percent it's not gonna be scaling well that's for sure so the performance uplift we only get to see that performance of the uplift is when it's operating at 230 watts but not at 120 or 90 watts or even 60 watts then again the realistic approach should be 120 160 and 230 the most realistic part is the 120 when when everyone is utilizing the processor in a normal case that would be the most significant you can also consider the 160 part which may have a little bit improvement that's for sure but again you get to see the most improvement when it's utilizing at 230 watts but to utilize at 230 watts you need better cooling system definitely and in this case they used the water cooling system but i'm guessing if you're going for a ryzen 9 1950x the top of the line processor you would require or you would want a better cooling system and possibly a water cool system so yeah what do you think and next up we have arm introducing their arm accuracy super resolution that is the biggest surprise that you will get this time which is arm moving into the upscaling tech that is not what i was expecting because i was expecting fsr to be implemented but they have implemented their own arm super which is accuracy super resolution so this is the basic flowchart of how arm asr operates which is rendering then lighting based post processing then upscaler which will be the ASR and then image based post processing and then we get to see the final product so as for the lighting based post processing we're looking into screen space reflections screen space ambient occultations denoisers which is shadows and reflections and of course exposure for image based post processing we'll be looking at film grain chromatic abbreviation vignette and of course tone mapping so these are the stuff that they're utilizing so as you can clearly see their naming is ASR there is a reason for that because they're utilizing AMD's fidelity FX super resolution to and improving it further so they're basically utilizing amd fsr definitely but they've improved fsr 2 and renamed it to asr so let's look into it of course and fsr being the open source i think they have the right to do that no problem with that so we get to see the temporal upscaling here and this is the product that we got we get to see from arm and it's clearly they're utilizing look as you can see at asr off it's only 540p and the reason they're utilizing 540p is, is clearly because it's going to be utilized for mobile devices like like your phone if you're playing a game of course and of course the resolution wouldn't be 1080p in your phone most of the times it will be utilizing the low resolution if you really want to get an output which is the target resolution of 10, 1920 and times 1080p so that your target resolution is 1080p so you need to upscale at a much lower resolution in this case they're using 540p and the output we're looking at is substantially better clearly because when you look into these pavements right over here it clearly tells you this that there's a huge improvement here this is completely blurry at 540p look at this it's very much clear and the roads similar case completely blurred out but this is looking pretty good even the even the smoke that is coming out from the drains it also looks 
pretty decent, not gonna lie. So yeah, I mean, the image quality itself doesn't look that good because it's obviously was captured in a mobile device and in mobile device, the graphics quality will never be great. But still at 540p to from 540p to 1080p, this is a pretty good upscaling clearly. So they also compare the frame rates. Of course, that is more important because, you know, image quality is important. But, you know, if it's hampering the frame rate, what and what's the deal, right? So at native, we're comparing this to the native, of course, so ARM ASR at zoom level of 1.5, we get to see 138% or I should say 38% improvement. At 1.7 zoom, we're looking at 49% or 1.7 upscaling, we should say. And at two times upscaling, we're looking at 53%. I don't think anybody would be utilizing this one because when you go twice the upscaling, it becomes in terms of image quality, it becomes very poor. So I'm guessing the most default one would be the 38% uplift, which is of course what FSR is also going for, even though what is the most surprising thing is that FSR 2 at 1.5x improvement would we don't see that much improvement in terms of FSR because in terms of frame rate because it's, it goes down by 4%, which is quite interesting. Also to note that they are utilizing FSR 2 here, but they also improved F introduced FSR 1. But in this case, clearly you can say that ARM is the winner because rest of the case for FSR 2 at 1.7 and at 2, we don't see that much of a great improvement here. So clearly ARM has made FSR 2 even better, just to put it lightly. Also, one more thing they have included, which is the GPU load, which is a pretty interesting aspect here when you're utilizing the preset quality or balance or performance. This is the GPU load we're looking at. So for ARM, the GPU load is less than 50 for all the cases, which surprises me a lot when FSR G GPU load is pretty high in all cases. Clearly, you can see that. But for ARM, it's quite low. So utilizing less GPU power, you get more FPS, which is quite interesting. That is an interesting point of view that they have Im improved. That's for sure. As for power consumption, even though that doesn't really matter, it still improves the power consumption by a lot, definitely. The quality, even the quality is, is giving you more than 20% save here. So that's pretty neat. And I don't think you have to go for balance or performance because the quality already gives you good performance, better image quality, and also better power consumption. So of course, I think this is the better quality we're looking at. So this is the image as in terms of image upscaling, we get to see this and they've also showed the comparison. So let's look into it. So this is the base level rendering, of course. And for ARM ASR, we get to see this kind of image. As for the mustache, you can clearly tell that FSR1 and GSR are not really doing that great at all. And ARM ASR, which is basically is a better version of FSR2, maybe they should have in introduced the FSR2 because, you know, ARM ASR is basically FSR2, but improved. So I think that would have been a better comparison. But I guess the image quality wise, it doesn't really make a huge difference in terms of performance. However, it does make a huge difference. So quality wise, it's not bad. It's close to the ground truth or the native, but it's better than, of course, the rest of the upscaling tech introduced here. Didn't compare with DLSS though. So I'm guessing it's not going to be that good as DLSS in terms of image quality. So yeah, it's an interesting looking tech from ARM. They're introducing their first upscaling tech and probably in the market, it's going to be the fourth upscaling tech that will be available, which is, you know, FSR, DLSS, Intel XCSs, and now ARM A ASR, which is accuracy super resolution. Quite interesting. What do you think about this? And I would like to see this in to the desktop or the desktop GPUs or processors, because if, if they can make it better version of FSR, then of course that is pretty good. But I'm guessing is ARM is doing this only to serve the mobile audience here, which is expected because ARM is for mobile devices and they will be introducing ASR very soon.